Good evening, everybody. Uh, before we get started, if you would uh, join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, and Mr. Tyler is going to lead us in the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just, we just come to you with thanks that Many thanks that you've blessed our town the way you have. We, we, we ask for continued blessings. We pray for our employees and our citizens. We pray that we make the best decisions as a, as a commission for this town. Just thank you for the country. Thank you for our servicemen. In Jesus' name, amen. Right. Thank you all for joining us for our April 2nd, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. I will call this meeting to order if we can do roll call. <coughs> Gary Compton. Here. Roy Covert. Here. James David. Here. Vivi Haney. Here. Shannon Mueller. Peyton Parker. Kevin Parsley. Here. Ben Peters. Here. Dale Tyler. Here. Any questions of the minutes for March? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Motion by Mrs. Haney. Second. Second by Mr. Coverts. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. First item that we have on the agenda is a tabled item, C19-04 Moon Pizza, 323 East Emma Avenue, UC Unit 44 Mobile Vending in a downtown form-based code neighborhood center, cent, neighborhood center type one, presented by Daphne Scott. Food truck's no longer at that location, so I think we just need to make sure that uh, we gave them a chance if they wanted to show up tonight. Okay. <coughs> All right, next section is uh, rezoning R19-12, Manuel Martinez Barroso, 3525 Butterfield Coach Road from A1 to an SF3, uh, presented by Manuel. I think um, actually Luis is going to be translating for this on here, so. Come over come here. here. <coughs> sí, no más dime lo que quieres que diga. Sí, Luis, mire, lo que pasa que él quiere hacer mi mi propiedad uh, de del ahorita es la zona del rural, la quiero cambiar a so, a zona F A uno. He's on a rural property and he wants to turn that into an F1 zone. It's F1. Is F1 already? Dice que ya está en F1. Ya está, o la van a hacer? It's already zoned as F1, he's asking. Oh, it's going to, it's zoned A1 now. He's going to SF3, right? Okay. Que dice que es una zona A1, A1 ahorita, y la van a hacer a una F3. Oh, okay. Sí, y este el, nada más que quería para 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 agrandar el, la propiedad pues he just wants to make the property bigger okay. he wants to add on to his house correct le, va, le, le quieres aumentar a tu casa sí yes he wants to add on okay. and it's not a standard lot in an A1 zone it's too small for an A1 zone and, and in order to meet the property sizes that he has in SF3 is the zoning classification he's asking for, which is a <coughs> a lot that has 60 foot of frontage and 7,000 square feet in the lot itself. Any other comments that you have? The uh, comprehensive land use plan indicates low density residential and neighborhood commercial use for the area. The rezoning request is in keeping <coughs> with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan is recommended for approval. Protect the positive aspects of neighborhood character throughout the city appropriate locations for single family and multifamily residential development and assure ad adequate land allocation for residential purposes by providing lots of adequate size. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Covert. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Arsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. The rezoning passes 6-0. Okay, tu rezonamiento acaba de pasar. Staff will prepare the oh. ordinance. It goes to council on the 23rd. Los empleados van a preparar la orden para que se presente al consulado de Springdale en 23rd. 
en el 23 de este. Ok, está bien. Muchas gracias. Okay. So he'll need to be here on that, correct? Yes, he's encouraged Neces to be here that night. Necesitas estar aquí también el 23 a las 6 de la tarde. A las 6 de la tarde el, el 23 de abril. Sí, uh, April 23rd, right? 6 o'clock in this room. Uh -huh. A las 6 aquí. Ok, gracias. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, R19-13, <coughs> Roberto Zemaripa, 117 East County Line Roads, uh, from C2 to an I-1 presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Uh, we're requesting this parcel be rezoned um, to I-1. Uh, I believe the adjacent properties are all I-1, and um, I'm here to answer any questions. It's kind of a unique track in that part of it is zone MF4 and part of it is zone C2. Yeah. So we're, we're consolidating it all into an I-1 zone. Uh, go ahead and go through comments. Okay. The comprehensive land use plan indicates commercial use for the area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan is recommended for approval, assure adequate land allocations for industrial growth protected from encroachment by non-industrial uses. And I think this is one of those areas when we update our land use plan, we need to go back and look at it because most of the property in that area is industrial. The MF4 was kind of out of character when it was rezoned to that. And so, uh, but we are recommending approval of this rezoning request. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mrs. Haney. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. That passes 7-0. On that. Actually, I said the last one as far as uh, R19-12. That was 7-0 as well. I think I said 6. Staff will prepare the ordinance. It goes to council on the 23rd. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Can you come up to the mic? Oh, okay. Sorry. Is that better? Well, now I can, I can be louder. Slower is a little bit harder for me to do. Sorry. I will try that. You have a little bean bag I can throw at her or <laughs> yeah. something like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're going to be up here for a while, aren't you, Jason? Off and on. <laughs> All right. The next one, R19-14, the Creamery, uh, 738 North 40th Street from C2 to C5 presented by ESI. Thank you. Yeah, we were requesting a, a portion of this property to be rezoned, um, the frontage along 40th Street, which is about a half an acre. Um, I believe later in the meeting we'll see a large scale for this project. Um, the reason for the quest is we're uh, asking for uh, an approval of a, of a restaurant, um, a drive through restaurant facility in that location. So I'll answer any other questions. Staff comments? And it has to go to C5 if they're going to have a drive through that goes with it. Um, the comprehensive land use plan indicates commercial use for the area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan as recommended for approval. Improve the city's economic base and tax structure through the promotion of healthy, stable commercial concentrations. Assure adequate land allocation for commercial areas of sufficient size and in proper locations. And encourage the development of a wide range of commercial development for the residents and tourists to include neighborhood, community, and regional centers. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. So, so only that front piece on here, because that's different from what we had in our packet. Yes, but they are only, they are only uh, requesting to rezone this half acre. It's basically the, the area that's east of the ditch. But you can kind of see the concrete ditch yeah. that runs through there. That's the area that we're asking to be rezoned. Keep in mind, the, the map that you have in your packet is for location so you know where it is. Okay. When we come to put this together to go with the ordinance itself, it's the actual piece that's being resigned. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Covert. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Rezoning passes 7-0. Thank you. 
Next section is conditional use. We have conditional use 19-05, Sherry Elam, 3201 Cook Lane, use unit 14 in A1, presented by Rex or Gloria Qualls. Now we do have, um, when we get to it as far as for public comments, we do have two emails that we'll read into the record on it, so but go ahead. Hi, I'm Sherry Elam. <clears throat> My parents, Rex and Gloria Qualls, are here. And I have a little over eight acres that I'd like to have them put a, a double wide on the property with a foundation so I can keep them close to me. Okay. Staff comments? The ingress and egress to the property is unacceptable. It doesn't have a paved access, right? No. Not paved, okay. The off street parking and loading areas are acceptable. The refuge and service areas are acceptable. Utilities, uh, you have had a uh, septic system perk test. perk test done, and you have enough area to put another septic system on it. There would be no screenings. Uh, it's not applicable to this one or a sign. The yard requirements and other open space requirements are acceptable. The size and shape of the site, including the size, shape, and arrangement is acceptable. Uh, landscaping is not a uh, requirement for this type of use. and it's generally compatible with the adjacent properties and other property in the general district. <coughs> Read these yes. comments. Okay, this one it was received or was sent to all the planning commission members. It says, "Good afternoon, commission members. I'm reaching out to you today via email regarding Ms. Elam's proposed mobile home conditional use C1905, as I am unable to attend the hearing in person. Our primary concern is the decrease in property value of our new home, as well as our neighbors' immediate abreast of the proposed <coughs> mobile, and this is our neighborhood. Also, the change in theme and direction type of growth of our neighborhood we respect Elam's need to care for her parents in their elder years, but if it is allowed to be moved in, we question what will become of the mobile home when it is, its use is no longer required proposed to be permanent with concrete foundation, and if not removed after it needs expires, the general maintenance of the property upkeep, et cetera. We in no way wish to cause Ms. Elam any headache, but only to protect our investment in our home and property. We strongly disapprove of the proposed mobile. Thank you for your consideration, Justin Shockley. The other one is This one is from uh, Joshua Lawson, to whom it may concern. The reason for writing you today is to express some issues with public hearing C-1950. I feel very strongly that this request should not be approved as it will potentially decrease the property value among the neighborhood, be an eyesore for those who can see it and all around degrade the reputation of our small community. With the addition of a concrete pad under the trailer home, it does appear that this will only be a short-term arrangement. I understand that Sherry Elam wants to look after her elderly father, but I truly think that adding a trailer home to her property isn't the correct way to do it. When life happens and her father is no longer here, what happens to the trailer at that point will be left unoccupied and uncared for. I state my opinions on this case, not for dislike of Sherry Elam or her intentions, but looking out for the betterment of our neighborhood. I hope you will take my request in consideration as you review this case. Thank you for your time. And I think what they were referencing there was 1905, because uh, you put in there 19 50. Oh, it's it. Uh, yeah, okay. Any other questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Can you tell me on the property where the trailer would sit? Yeah, I have a little over eight acres. Uh -huh. I am more than 2,000 feet from any neighbor. And so, you know, three acres, four acres in between. You right, know. so looking at that picture right there, okay. where, would, where would it be? Okay. As I understand it, you're down here closer to where that number where it says 3035. Were you looking at somewhere in that area of the, yeah, of the property? There. And approximately how far is that in yards from the road, from the main road, would you say? 1,500 feet. Okay. I'm on the last um, house on Cook Lane. You have to cross over two cattle guards to get to it. I'm surrounded by trees. There's nobody, there's nobody there, so I don't know how it would be an eyesore. And if, you know, I keep my property up, you know, have the whole eight acres mowed and managed. Mr. Shockley, can you speak into the mic? 
please. And Mr. Shockley asked me if I would deed him an easement so he could use my electric pole to save him money. And here, now he's he, a little disappointing that he would not want, you know, a mobile home. But that's all my parents can afford. And it would be a nice one. <laughs> but it's still cheaper than building a house or trying to build a one. We looked at every angle. <laughs> the duration of the conditional use would be, it would just remain as long as she owned the property, but if it had sold? This conditional use would be granted to her at this location. It's not transferable unless it comes back to planning commission to As long as she still owns it, it can. It doesn't mean that she couldn't rent it out to somebody else. But if she sells the property, the conditional use would have to be approved to the next property owner. Could it also be pending on the the property to be able to sell, and that you would have something that would be out of violation? Excuse me. That becomes probably more a, for Sarah on this. That one. becomes a Sarah question as to if she sells the property, is it a if the property transfers, how do we keep the mobile home from transferring with it and making sure that conditional use isn't transferred to somebody else? You'd have to split it all. I'm sorry. I mean, how she wants to go about handling the mobile home, if it sells, it's not going to be the city's business at that point. It's just you can grant it to her, this property, and what she does from there. Okay, so we, we if have no the property so. sells, there would need to be some arrangement made either the property split split or the mobile home has to be replaced the the concern is we might not know when the property sold that's correct right okay i believe i will live and die there <laughs> i've owned it since 95 so okay any other questions i just want to make sure i understand so if the property is plan on living there until you know the end and then that property transfers owner there would have to be a new a new application for to continue to have the mobile home there or right it would have to be granted to someone else to keep the mobile home there yeah the concern and, is is we may not know when the property sells and then what about the egress and the ingress and egress well if she splits it to do a second tandem lot which we discourage double tandem lots that would have to be approved the only other issue i mean it was approved like that and they were granted or the the, the road wasn't paved did you buy it with that easement already to the street mm -hmm. any other questions or comments let's be a call for the vote call for the vote Alter vote by Mr. Covert. Question on the call of the, on this. If we're voting, voting that it's going to need paved, the road is going to need, need paved, or is that unless you add that to your motion, she's not creating mm -hmm. the separate lot. It's already there. Okay. She's asking for a conditional use to put a a mobile <clears throat> home on that location with nothing else being done to it. Okay, I, I got it now. So then I just have one. So then, how like how would you handle parking and driving? To I'm just curious, you know, where you plan on having the. Well, my driveway is really long. You're gonna have the like by the numbers is where you said you planned on having it, or back. Yeah, a little ways, somewhere in there. Cut a driveway here. Somewhere in there, yes. I mean, it just, it's a short drive because the home, mobile home would be right there. So, but yeah, but it's all of a, my driveway. But your plan is to put in a driveway with the trailer? Yeah, well, they have to turn in, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the question, I think where they're headed is, are you just let them park on the grass or is there actually going to be a, a driveway for it? Yeah, what? probably just gravel, SB2, probably, you know, that's what's out there now. Nothing's paved. But we're to make sure I understand. We're not adding anything to ensure that happens. It's it's at. I mean, we're not. Unless you make body, that condition right. one of the conditions <clears throat> of the conditional use, that you would have to have a paved access to this mobile home to be putting in there. You can add conditions to a conditional use. 
but it county line on the west side just it's only like 500 feet that's all that's paved and everything else is sb2 i mean it's gravel there's no other paved pavement anywhere i don't i, I apologize you want to comment i'm sorry that's all right Currently, there's already three residential dwelling units off a non-compliant drive, two cattle guards. Our fire apparatus would not potentially not even be able to make it up there now. So you don't have any fire access whatsoever. Apparently, the neighbor caught fire and they were there last Which year. neighbor? Um, the one up by the fence, if you know, first one on Cook Lane. First one on Cook, yeah. we have to call it across the Cook. No, yeah. We don't, yes, we do. you do. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, she caught about 20 acres of the neighbors on fire, so they were there. But right. So I think that the only <laughs> conditional uh, thing I would ask for is I, I don't necessarily think it needs to be paid, but I do think that the trailer, once established, uh, if, if it's approved in that way, does need to have a gravel parking spot for it. I don't yes. think we need to have a uh, just a spot in the yard where we're where we're pulled off and parking. You, I do know it's remote, um, but to your point, at some point it may be sold and it may be become another residence. And I think it needs to have its own personal spot for their for their cars to park on. So that would be something I'd like to add to that. You're adding that to the call for your call for the vote yes, that it would be required to have two gravel parking spaces established. Yes, ma'am. Sounds good. Any other That's questions? the condition on the, on the condition. Dale, did that answer your question? Yes, that, okay. That, that. So we have a call for the vote, Mr. Covert. Haney? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Conditional use passes 7-0. Staff will prepare the uh, resolution that goes to council on the 23rd. The 23rd April. Um, do I turn these in here? They tell yeah, me to can we just give them to Debbie. All right. Next uh, conditional use C 19 06, Sam and Brenda Lazenby, Washington County Parcel 001 14489 000, tandem lot split. It also has a variance B 19 23 for deviation of access easement requirement. Presented by Sam or Brenda Lazenby. Thank you, Jason Apple with ESI. Debbie, I think we brought that form. I think yeah. it's right there on top. It's here. On that second Thank sheet, you. right there on top. Yep. Yes. <coughs> yes, it is. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry. Here. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, we're here requesting a tandem lot split. Um, Currently, the property is owned by Sam and Brenda Lazenby. Um, one of their sons' families is looking to build a house up on top, um, and so we're trying to split that up, um, mainly the southern piece, southern 28 acres, there we go. The 2A piece will remain with Sam and Brenda, and then the remainder, um, all three tracks, um, will go to Nathan and Jordana Lazenby. Um, and so currently this is in the county um, accessed by Tower Road which is a gravel road um, and so with that uh, our request for variance of the paved driveway requirements um, we will uh, have a paved or a, a gravel um, driveway 20 feet wide to accommodate fire so I'll answer any other questions staff comments so this track has already been split into three tracks? The original track was divided into three. I, there are currently multiple parcels on this site. So it's been divided without a subdivision proposal? So we intended to, so there's a section line that breaks track 2B and 1A. And so that's the reason why there's two tracks there, or it would just be one, if that makes sense. There's a, there's a section line right there that breaks the parcel numbers and the track numbers. Which makes it a track one, so there would be a track one and a track two and a 
2B and 2A. So there's three tracks to start with and we're creating the fourth track. And this is all done on a private access road. It's not a public street, correct? Correct, yes. Our ordinance discourages multiple tandem lots. You know, when you get to the third, fourth, we're really looking at a subdivision. So this would be something that we don't normally do. So the, the intent of the track 1B is so we can build a house on that track 1B and mortgage it separately from the remaining 75 acres. Which is subdividing it, correct? It's gonna have a different ownership, correct? It'll be the same ownership as track 1A and 2B. And then all, three, all three of those tracks will be retained by one owner and then track 2A will remain with Sam and Brenda Lazenby. We'll have how many owners then when we get finished? Two owners. Two owners. Yes. Okay. The intent's not to sell the remaining pieces. It's just to um, mortgage that five acres with the house. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? If you'll come up to the mic and state your name and address, please. My name is Tarina Gregory, and I am due east of the Lazendy property down at the bottom of the mountain. Uh, I have a concern with water. If they build a house there and do something to divert the water, it comes rolling off that yeah. mountain like Can crazy. Can you talk a little bit more into the mic for me, please? I'm sorry. Uh, the water? If they try to divert the water in any way, it comes down the mountain right into my backyard. And I've already spent several thousand dollars putting French drains and retaining walls. And I have no objection to them building there, but I wanna make sure that at some future point they decide, oh, there, here's a low spot. I wanna, I wanna you know, divert the water because it'll come right down in my crawl space. And the other thing is I'm concerned about fire. If, if the f fire trucks can't get up there, then the fire's gonna come right down the mountain into my backyard. So uh, we need to make sure that there is f fire access. Thank you. Did you wanna address the fire piece at all? Or? Currently, there's no structures on that road, so until they build more than two, there's no really anything in the fire code that yeah. requires anything. But the current road there is accessible, <clears throat> or? <clears throat> only, the fire code only mentions more greater than two residential units served by the same road. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Well, my concern is can, that can you state your name and oh I'm sorry my name is Dolly Headley and I actually live on Tower Road which goes up to that piece of property and my concern as well as my my neighbors who couldn't make it is that creating a single track like that would open the door for additional subdivision of the property and influencing the the runoff we also have a, a substantial runoff problem from that mountain <clears throat> and it's um, any type of uh, development further of that property would, would you know, sub substantially impact us. Um, so my question is, is this something that would open the door? Like I said, after this, now can there be further subdivision? I mean, at what point, um, I mean, and why put a Tract 1B in the middle of a Tract 1A like an island and still be owned by the same people? So that, I'm just kind of curious about that. You want to address any? Well, the creating of the track 1B is so that they don't have to put the mortgage on the entire piece of property. Basically, that's why they want to split one off. 
it will have the same ownership, but only a small portion of that tract will be un as collateral for the mortgage. That's why they're sp oh, splitting okay. it right now. Okay. Now, that, with that being said, it still creates a separate tract that could be sold separately. And my other question was, is I was actually looking over the requirements for tandem lot. And on the second paragraph, it even states that it's highly discouraged um, to even go for a, a lot behind another tandem. And looking at this, doesn't this create almost like a triple tandem lot? Well, situation? that was my first statement. Because, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, normally, when you get into this kind of situation, you're looking at a subdivision rather than creating multiple tandem lots behind each other so that they're all accessed by public street. They're asking for that to be waived and be able to do that as a double tandem lot. But you're right, that's mm -hmm. what our ordinance says. Okay, and then my third question would be is why split? Right now it's two lots. Um, and then now it's gonna be split into four lots. And so I'm, my question is why even create a split between track 2B and track 2A? Why is that necessary? Okay, I can't answer that for you. So the intent is is to create a lot for lot 2A, which is 28 acres that will remain with Sam and Brenda. And the intent for the remainder of the piece is to be acquired by their son, Nathan, and family. And so the reason there's a lot line between 2B and 1A is because there's a section line there and the county will require us to parcel those two separately. So that's why it's shown, our, if it was up to me, those would be one track. So we would basically have three lots total. Par parceling is ind <coughs> independent of platting. That is not required for a plat. That's for the assessors. They can parcel it out. There's a guide for Arkansas that is suggested for them to follow. They do not have to follow it, it is not a law. That's just the way the assessor for the county that is over this area decides to do it. But it does not have anything to do with platting of the land. The assessor is independent of platting of the land. So they can plat these out as one full lot. And if they wanna assess it independently of the section line, that is per the individual assessor in the county in the state of Arkansas. We would suggest they combine those in there so they're not recreating as many tandem lots that there's just a section line going through there so that that would be one lot. So basically we would have three lots instead of four. It would be two. If, my, if I understand it, if I understand it would be two because then you would, you would not do the split um, between 2B, well it would be three, yeah. It would be, be three one, lots. One A, one B, and then the, com, the combined 2B and 2A. And then, like I said, I, I would like some sort of reassurance that all of a sudden we're not going to, I mean, it looks like an island in, this, <laughs> in the middle of the ocean. My, my concern is that in, there's a future development uh, situation that might be in consideration here. Well, and, to develop it further and create more lots, they would have to come back, mm -hmm. go through the process again, either as mm -hmm. a subdivision plat or as another conditional use application. Mm -hmm. I just, I just feel it, it sets precedence. And also our, the, the county road that goes up that property is very poorly maintained. And in, most, in many places along that road, it's single uh, traffic. And there's a sharp curve in the road. And the traffic has increased probably three to four fold since already, there is already a residence built up there. Um, and that the traffic will just, I don't think that the road, the county road, is capable of handling this increase in traffic. And it creates a lot of dust for all the people who, are along, who have their homes along the way, so it lowers our property value. There, um, it stops there seems, the drainage. There seems to be a lot going on with this request, and I don't know that it's, I'm still confused by it, quite honestly, there. Um, I don't know that this is in a position to be heard tonight, quite honestly. Um, because what I'm hearing is, is that 
you're wanting to have as far as two owners in this whole piece is what that is, needs to be secured. Within those two owners, you want to be able to have as far as four different parcels of land in, in that whole piece. With one of those that is planned as far as for a, a house to be built on it in that whole piece. Yes. I mean, you guys have the power. It, it's it's a conditional use. If we change anything going forward, it's got to come back. I mean, um, if you want to put a restriction of barcode two units, two residential units on that one piece, then well, my question. I mean, I guess back to the planning department is: is there other recommendations of how to how to approach this that we should consider? That wouldn't have it presented as a conditional use like this well i'll go back and say again the next option is to actually subdivide it create a public street so that it's all the lots that they create are accessed from a public street then we know how it's going to be div divided and it gets proper access to it but i could see as far as if they just want to put one resident on it right now they're not willing to probably put the money into it as far as the public street that's, correct. that's why you were here asking for conditional use Is just so I, I want to make sure I understand. Is there a county line going between 2B and 1A? No, there is a section line, not a county line. This is all in one county. So, I mean, is there anything to preclude them from combining 1A and 2B? I'll combine them. So you would one. combine yes. those? Okay, so that, that way there would just be the three lots, yes. and, and that 1B is really for mortgage purposes, which. Which I, I mean, I can understand the reasoning behind that. So if those two are connect, we, we'd have three lots instead. Then you'd have three lots. Right. Still at three lots. Yeah. It still puts you at risk, you know. It, and if you they, combine the, the like the 2A at the bottom actually has the frontage requirement for what we'd be looking for. Like we still, even though we don't have zoning out in the county that the city is able to enforce, like you guys have the uh, planning control over it for subdivision pr principles. Um, it still has a kind of a lot requirement, which is again why they came in to do the conditional use. Like our rule requirement is like 200, you know, it has, depending on if it's rural or in a kind of more dense area, there's a twofold requirement. But the bottom one does have the frontage, so it would basically, if you combine the two tracks on the top separate from the five, you are reducing the number of tandem lots we're kind of talking about here, so. So the recommendation is, is just uh, just have 1A and then have 2B, 2A. Yes. Okay. That's what we're talking about, creating those three lots. Yes. Okay. I'm confused again. Combining 2A and so, 2B, right? No. 2B no. is adding being added to 1A. So that's one lot. And 1B, then, 1B stays. Right. What and 2A on. becomes the other and one. 2A is the right. other one. That straight line across through there that splits 1A and 2B apart, that line goes away because that's a section line. And anything else would be, any, any improvements, would they'd have to bring it back to us as far as? Any other subdivision would have to come back. Any other building at all? I mean, not building at all, but uh, Any other housing. subdivision. Any other cutting, separating lots would have to come back. Okay. So yeah. they, but they can still build another <coughs> house up there. Yeah, nothing, nothing in there will have, like, any of the frontage requirements. So we would we would bring it have to come back to you for some additional um, there is that control factor like Jason was saying with the conditional use because um, it, it just it's not going to have the frontage requirements that's that's what they can't you know tandem lot gets them to in the first place is just but allowing them to do that one what I'm saying is if they're if they're going to put another house up there that doesn't I mean that belongs to them mm -hmm. that's still another conditional use that uh, for the house, no, it would fall under the uh, purview of the county for the residential zoning and their requirements for that okay. that action. Once you do subdivide that, that does un take some control <laughs> off the ability for because we don't do permitting out there. So okay. it, it would fall to the county guidelines in that uh, for the actual residential dwellings out in that area. So. <coughs> Our road a public road at all, or is it private from the time it leaves 412? It's uh, so right when it comes off of that uh, portion, it's a it's a county road up to about where I put the uh, green access is where the access easement would, you know, start, 
So up um, to their property is county and then it's private kind, on their property? Kind of. It's a little sketchy in there because it's county road, you know, and a prescriptive right of way. I mean, okay. So. You said you're going to put a 20 foot drive? 20 foot gravel drive, yeah. But wide drive. I think there's already one there. Any other questions or comments? Hello. Sorry. Elizabeth Couch, and I live on Tower Road. Um, the property you're speaking of is above me. Um, mistakenly, it was the Tower Road was referenced as a gravel road. It's actually a dirt road. It's only paved like 40 feet maybe from 412. The only thing I want to, and my house is only like 30 feet from Tower Road, which dusts me out all the time. But uh, the only thing that I want to address is the comment to delete requirements to build a paved driveway from the end of Tower Road to proposed five acre track. And I just want to say that I've been here since 2004 and it was proposed to split that property in uh, 10 acre tracks before and Washington County required that they put in a paved road, sidewalks and lights, street lights. So anyway, that was denied. Um, they did tell him he could do 10 acre, but I don't see that that happened. Um, and that's all I had to say. Thank you. I, I just, ma'am, before you, you said you lived on Tower Road. I do. Wh whereabout is your way to? Well, right up, you know, where the green line to where they're trying to go uh, off Tower Road. I probably live 500 feet maybe from the entrance to their their property where uh where they where they are trying to stay thank you mm -hmm. i don't want to stop anyone from building their house i'm just concerned about the things that that can happen to the mountain it's it's solid rock up there we have a real drainage problem during heavy sta uh, storms and stuff and so it, and also the splitting of the two lower lots makes me feel like there's just, you know, there's a, an eye for additional housing that would go up on that property, which would severely impact my property. I'm right below uh, 2A um, before that curve. And that water comes off that mountain and it's washed out the county road um, to where it, it had a 10 foot ditch about 10 feet deep and washed onto my property. It's, there's a drainage problem completely off that mountain because it's, it's solid rock. Um, so my concerns are those. It's just you know, con, you know, adding additional structures up there and, and continue building. And, the, and separating those lots kind of gives me the feeling that that's where this is headed. Thank you. My name is Judy Collins and I live on uh, County Road 2052 and I'm just concerned about additional, I think you all have already addressed it, but uh, dividing it, is it going to be a subdivision where they put more houses there? Because we have a drainage problem too because it is solid rock. We live on the west side of the mountain, northwest side of the mountain. And I just, but I think you all have addressed it already that uh, it will have to come back if there's any more subdivisions because they're just talking about building one house, right? One house, okay. They would have to bring it back if there was a subdivision, but they can still build. Can they build as many houses as they want? Or? Well, whatever the county's minimum lot sizes would be, or how many ever you can put on one track, because it's in the county's jurisdiction until they sub subdivide it. When they start subdividing it, that's where we get involved. So I just want to make sure that's kind of clear. I did also just want to say, I don't know if anyone is familiar with this mountain, but this used to be Parsons Mountain. It was a, a private dump. And there are a great deal of environmental concerns that I have. And I'm sure we are also within the Beaver Lake Watershed District. I'm sure there'd be a lot of concerns over any type of major uh, 
construction and movement of, uh, of soil up on that mountain. I'd also like to submit something I have and make sure that uh, if this does go to county that my comments um, are forwarded to, con to county as well. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, it's to the commission. To be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Covert. And, and is that with splitting it the way we discussed? Yes. Right? That's with creating for, three lots, right? The call for the vote on the variance or the, the actual conditional use tandem? This is the conditional use, correct? Yes, ma'am. Parsley? No. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Uh, this passes 6 1. And the variance for access easements? Call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Covert. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parsley? No. Uh, that passes 6 1 as well. Thank you. Thank you. Does that go to, Patsy, does that go to council or no? Yeah, that's the county. County. Next section is uh, final plats 19-04, Butterfield subdivision, east side of Butterfield Coach uh, Road to across from Blevins Lane, presented by James Cook. My name's James Koch. I'm the project engineer and representative for the uh, Butterfield subdivision. To my knowledge, I think we've addressed all items on uh, our punch list. Um, every item of concern that we've had uh, uh, presented to us, I believe we've, we've uh, addressed it. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments for me, um, just let me know what that is, please. Staff comments. Uh, by ordinance, the detention pond is required to be transferred to the city. How are you proposing to transfer? Um, that is to be conveyed in two years, I believe. They've designated uh, the, the detention area as lot 15 on the final plat, and that is going to convey uh, back over to the city in two years. We need to add a corporate resolution that the individual signing or conducting the certificate of transmittal is authorized by the LLC. Uh, General reminder, there's tree planting requirements with our street design. Uh, standard comment that all utility companies and other departments must be addressed prior to approval. These specifically include fire and water sewer comments. Uh, all items on the attached list must be satisfied prior to obtaining the planning director's signature on the final plat. And I need to ask somebody in engineering, there was a comment about the meets and bounds should match the d deed. Is there a concern with we did, description that's on it or do we, we do you know what that is? Uh, we did uh, uh, address it. We did revise uh, okay. to make the description um, match, okay. I guess. Yes. Okay. okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? Let's do the commission. Motion to approve subject to staff comments. Motion by Ms. Haney. Second. Second by Mr. Peters. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. <clears throat> Arsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Final plat passes 7 0. If you want this to go to council next Tuesday, the ordinance needs to be in our office by uh, Thursday at noon. The, the what? The ordinance. Okay. To approve the, to accept the final plat has to be in our office by Thursday at noon. If oh. you want it on next Tuesday's agenda. Okay, um, I guess I'm not familiar with what you're asking me to, to do here. Call the office in the morning and okay. we'll help you get set right. up with something. Thank you. Thank you. Next final plat, 19-2, Ramsey Place, northwest corner of Ball and West County Line, presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Um, here requesting approval of the final plat at Ramsey Place, phase one. Staff comments? 
Uh, we need to add the resolution and waiver number associated with the street to the plans, so we have a way to track that. Uh, pending engineering approval, please deconflict the drainage easement with public utilities easements per the drainage manual. Encroachment of certain drainage easements requires written director approval prior to plat finalization. Uh, is the distance direction heading for the property lines abutting Phoenix the heading sitting over the center line that needs to be addressed? Please add a note that lot 30 and number one cannot have access to Ball Road. Uh, add a corporate resolution that the individual signing or conducting the certificate of transmittal is authorized by the LLC. Uh, right of way is required to be dedicated to meet the master street plan. Note the total linear feet of street being dedicated per street classification. Show the instrument number of offsite drainage. All comments from <coughs> the utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval. And is there still an issue with the fire hydrant spacing? I guess we need that from Dwayne. There was an issue with the fire hydrants on this one. Did y'all get that resolved? Not that I know of. When we, when we started working on this subdivision, they could have either did one of two things. They could have made a dead end cul-de-sac or they could do a, we call it a modified turnaround where there was no turnaround. It just came all the way through and came back out. So they couldn't have more than 30 dwellings served by each street. We agreed to do that with reduction of the fire hydrant spacing as if it was a dead end street to no greater than 400 feet, no greater than 200 feet from any point a fire apparatus truck has to go. So basically they would need uh, hydrants at both entries and then one of the hydrants after the detention pond is greater than 400 feet in distance between the hydrants. Did we move them or anything? Oh. I, I thought they were addressed, but maybe, you know, I'll verify that. Okay, we need to have that addressed before we sign the final plan. Okay. Okay. Uh, all items on the attached list must be satisfied prior to obtaining the planning director's signature, which is the standard. Can we just verify that? Uh, is it lot 62 and? 31 or is it 30 and 1 that has to, it's the two on the end next to ball can't have access to ball drive right. whatever those two numbers yes. are okay can you tell me what those two numbers are i can't read that i that can't far. either <laughs> 30, and 30 and 1 30 and 1 okay i think the other one was we had a different phase number on there so it's lot 30 and lot 1 but those on the end can't have access to ball road understood i just want to make sure that was because that's not how it reads in the in the packet so yeah, there's a phase two, and, and the next two are, those two numbers are the two lots on the next phase of it, so. Okay. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Motion to approve, subject to staff comments. Motion by Mrs. Haney. Second. Second by Mr. Coverts. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? <laughs> yes. How are you? You're not supposed to be on there. Tyler? Yes. Final plat passes 7 0. Thank you. Brian, you want to vote? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. If you want this to go to council on next Tuesday, we need the ordinance in our office by Thursday evening. All right, next section. Lots of large scale tonight here. Large scale 19-06, Leisure Homes, east side of Mill Street, south of Old Wire Road, presented by Civil Design Engineers. Hi, my name is Ferdy Forey with Civil Design. Um, this is the second phase of the existing uh, development for uh, mansion patio homes that we completed uh, last year. And um, so these are two bedroom units and they're 50 units on a four acre parcel a part of the PUD that was already approved. Staff comments? This is really the second or third phase of... Depends on how you count phases, I guess. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> okay. um, all comments from the utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval of construction plans. Uh, utility lines have to be put underground. There was a question left about uh, drainage report that addresses this project. I'm assuming <coughs> engineering is good with this. Uh, that's it. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Motion to approve, subject to staff comments. Motion by Ms. Haney. Second. 
Second by Mr. Covert. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Large scale passes 7 0. Thank you. Next item, L19-07, Springdale Municipal Campus, southwest corner of Huntsville Avenue and Spring Street, presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Abbott with ESI. Um, this is uh, your new municipal campus building uh, and facilities. Um, I believe we've had two planning work sessions. Um, tried to accommodate all questions, concerns. <coughs> Um, looks like there's a couple of remaining items, but uh, I do have a, a representative, uh, Gail, with Hyatt Jackson, uh, one of the architects, if uh, you have any questions for her. Um, but we'll answer any questions. Okay. Staff comments? All comments from the utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval of construction plans. Uh, Utilities need to be put underground except for 12 kV and above, and I guess the ones along Johnson are? I think it's three phase, so I think it's above. Uh, coordinate utility easement placement conflicts with Springdale Water and Water Utilities. Uh, as of yet, no plans have been submitted to Springdale Water for their coordination yet. That needs to be done. Well, we submitted through the large scale review. Well, other than the that, final construction plans, right, yes. there there is some concern about how this building keeps its water and sewer facilities while you're building the other ones, and those are some of those concerns that needs to be addressed. Uh, provide integrated pedestrian walkways for interior parking island on Mill Street lot. No continuous walkability indicated from the pedestrian crossing through the lot. Uh, now I know we talked about this, but I don't think we got any revised plans that showed any of that. Well, I think there's a. The intents there, I don't think it's labeled um, crossing spring in between the two parking islands that go to mill toward okay. the main entry. So. It's not clear on the plans and we need to get, we need to have that address. Provide stamped or scored concrete at all pedestrian walkway crossings. Signs must be installed to designate pedestrian walkways. Trash containers, trash compactors and recycling bins shall be screened from public view. Uh, I don't think those are shown on there where they're screened. Uh, yeah. City Hall needs a bike rack, guys. At least one or more than one. We need to be a good example, so we need some bike racks put on the on the site somewhere. Uh, we still don't have a unified lighting plan for this property. Okay, I thought it was submitted. Okay, and then there was a qu questions raised about the intersection at Spring and Johnson, and the questions of it looking like you're pu pulling into a parking lot. I talked to Brent about those, but I don't think we've seen anything in section we need to see that people we're afraid people will think they're looking at pulling into the parking lot when they want to go north right in there and they'll want to go onto the other side of that meeting thinking they're going into a uh, parking lot and it's separated trap so we need to, to work on that one as as well um, I have to ask in engineering about are there any drainage concerns left I know we got some redesign on the uh, tension pond with a different kind of bottom channel yeah. through it rather channel than bottom. a concrete it, it has more of a look at what we have out on Gene George Boulevard correct um, yeah I spoke with Brad on that he said we weren't uh, opposed to the river rock okay. it, you know instead of the concrete trickle channel okay. it gives more of a more of a landscape look than just a concrete channel through it mm -hmm. yeah the, the only condition that we had is to make sure that the rocks were size big enough just make sure they don't, you know, float down the tension pond. Yeah, we would just assume they didn't do that. So I'm assuming the details of that still haven't been submitted, but we'll come in with the construction plans. Yeah, yeah. It'll, okay. be, it'll be similar to what's on Gene George in the Bosswell area. Have River they moved Rock. any down there yet? I don't believe in the bottom of the channel. Maybe on the sides, but not the right. bottom yet. Okay. I think that's all we have. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? Let's do the commission. Motion to approve, subject to staff comments. Motion by Mr. Covert. Second. Second by Ms. Haney. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. And just in case you haven't seen it, that's the uh, elevations of the building. That's 
large scale past the seven zero on there. So um, get ready, have a lot of patience. <laughs> so on, on yeah. This, so. yeah, working on that, aren't we? <laughs> so very exciting. So. All right, next uh, item L19 09, <clears throat> the Creamery, west side of 40th Street, south of Elm Springs Road. So there's also a variance for deviation of commercial design standards and deviation for landscaping requir requirements presented by ESI. Thank you, Jason Apple with ESI. Um, just let Patsy read staff report and then we'll uh, address the items. Okay. Necessary. Staff comments. I guess my first question, is this a phase development? Are we anticipating more development going on to the? No, not at this time. The reason, so the reason there's a crossing at the creek is for one for fire turnaround and then one for employee parking. We couldn't get I mean, this lot's really narrow, and so we we're trying to get as, as many uh, parking spaces for um, people going into the restaurant instead of the employees. So we tried to move them across the, that channel, um, and that's, that's the reason for that, um, but the, for that crossing. Okay. There's no other intent at this time. All comments from the utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval of construction plans. That's a standard comment. The underground utilities is a standard company. There seems to be a conflict between the site plan and the architectural drawings. Architect is indicating a patio on the site plan where the pedestrian walkway is located on the sidewalk. Uh, we're counting the patio as one of the six B entryway design elements. Please clarify the intention of this space via site plan or elevation modifications. So early on, we had a, a wider building, um, and this this was the intent for the the look of the front. Um, we should, we'll still have the main entry center um, that's on the east side, <coughs> which is the patio side. We just won't have a patio. Um, there will be a sidewalk in front to access those the front door, um, and so just trying to squeeze that footprint in between the ditch. 40th Street and then our north-south lines. Um, we ended up with a 30-foot wide building, which is, which is pretty narrow um, for this type of use. And so um, that's the reason for the landscape variances. Um, we're trying to do the best we can. We've got slightly less than five feet on the north and south lines um, adjacent to the parking areas and drive areas. Um, and I think we've got one to two feet of frontage uh, or I mean uh, foundation landscaping adjacent to the building between the sidewalk and the building um, and so okay that's, so that's what we're trying for basically what you're telling us is the elevation we have are not really what it's going to look like well the, the elevations are accurate the rendering is is not accurate if that makes the elevations are on the, the bottom of the page um, This is, the, this is the new drawing. They just didn't update the renderings, but the elevations are accurate. Okay, so, but when you look at... Okay. This still shows the patio in the front. Oh, so are I didn't we see having that. An awning? I didn't see that. There'll still be an awning and a sidewalk, just no patio. And there'll be landscape, landscaping along here between the building and the sidewalk? Yes, but there, it's only about a foot wide. So we'll do the best we can. Okay. Uh, so then, uh, Springdale does not currently maintain a public transit area should be provided or designed to accommodate possible future transit service. Please designate an area on the plan set just as a placeholder. The lighting plan needs to be altered to meet parking lot pedestrian and canopy average foot candle requirements. Uh, are there gonna be wall packs and, or if lighting is on the building itself. What, do we have all that worked out yet? There will be along the, the drive through side. About the other side. And then on the parking side as well, yes. Okay, we need clarification on the downspout location directions and drainage tie-in. We need that worked out. Okay, so then the landscaping variance you're asking for is to deviate from the perimeter landscaping. Explain to us what you're doing with perimeter landscaping then. 
show some on the south side with those trees to be planted next to the windows, I mean to the drive through lanes. No perimeter landing, uh, landscaping on the other side. I'll just go on while you're looking Correct. at that one. <laughs> Frontage landscaping, relocate any plantings displaced by utility site constraints. Aren't there a lot of utilities in that easement in the front? Yeah, so we, we just did some lower shrubbery type plantings in those areas and not the, the street tree requirement. We've added those trees throughout the site. You're putting those trees throughout the site, but we've only got four on here, five. And then you're putting some bigger ones on along, along that area on the other side of the creek? Right, yes. You want to deviate from the entryway landscaping. The architect has plantings provided on the elevations, but none are shown on the site plan. Yes. And then the deviation from the commercial design standards for building frontage landscaping requirement in that you're providing it, but it's what, what width instead of what it's supposed to it's be? It's still 10 foot wide. It's just not, it doesn't have the, the tree plantings in the island adjacent to the right of way. No, I'm talking about the building foundation landscaping. Right. So we're, we'll have some small plantings along the front that aren't shown there. There's only a, about a foot wide green space. It's shown on the north side and not on the east side. Okay. So this landscaping plan then doesn't really reflect the landscaping that you are proposing to do then because you've changed that adjacent to the building, but you've relocated the trees from the perimeter in the front. So we're still missing some of those. Is there landscaping that's missing off of this drawing is what I'm asking. The, the frontage landscaping okay. for in front of the building on the east side. The foundation landscaping, excuse me. Okay. So let's go to the commercial design variance that you're asking Just for. Just real quick, on the, on the overall landscaping, are we deviating from the total that's necessary or are we just relocating overall? I mean, our intent was to relocate. And I believe there's only... But still stay within the, the requirements overall. Right. I mean, our frontage is only... ...130. I mean, so we might need four trees in front okay. to meet the intent of the order. The, the only concern I have is you're deviating from putting it there because the building inside is so tight. There's a lot of us being shoved behind the drainage facility in the parking lot for the employees, correct? Because yes. that's the only place you've got to do it. Right, that's the only place we can put it. I mean, we would put them along the frontage, but there's the utilities in the way. With no intentions of we're going to know what's happening with the rest of the piece of property, so that has to be taken into account if something else is developed on that side. Okay. If something else is developed and, and any of that landscaping is um, taken out, then it would have to be put back. Otherwise, it would not be complying with with this whole piece. That's why I'm asking that question. I mean, the intent overall is that you're wanting to deviate as far as the required locations, but you're still committing to the entire percent of the landscaping. Yes, that is the intent. I think it still needs some work on it, but. Now let's talk about commercial design variances. Uh, deviate from development. Well, basically you're asking for the building to be as shown want commercial design standards to say whatever the building you propose look like that's what you want it to be. Right and I believe we meet the, in the intent of the commercial design standard. Okay. I, don't, I didn't understand what this comment. Okay. Meant. Deviate from development shall use articulating features such as arcades, display windows, entry areas, or awnings along at least 60 percent of the side. Okay if you take the patio off of the front you're going to have the awning across the front right? Yes. Okay. What kind of breaks and stuff are you doing on the other elevations? You're, you're, is there an awning over that? Uh, We've got a material break. Is it, I mean, I don't understand. Is that the This is the drive question? up window side on, okay, let's start with this one right over here. That's the rear of the building, correct? Yes. And it has a uh, garage store on it? Yes, for deliveries. That's for deliveries, okay. And the only other break it has is a window. Correct. No man door on that side or anything? No. Okay. And 
This over here becomes the north side elevation then? Oh, that's the south side because that's, that's where the drive-up window yes. is. Okay, where's the call box going to be? When you look at the layout of the of it's, the thing, I mean, do you drive up to the window and order there? or do you, Right, it'll be in the back. Well, that little at, island at has turn. a whole bunch of stuff in it. They're not very big. Usually you have menu boards and all that kind of stuff. You've got quite a bit of stuff in that island. Okay. Okay, let's go back to the elevations. So it has, how, how tall is that in that material on the bottom? What is that, brick or what is that? Yes, it's a brick. Brick, and what's the, the height of that? Four feet. Four feet, okay. Why are we still designing this here? Well, I'm pointing I mean, I, out to I you thought what we, the deviations you know, are. So I don't know, I thought we met the intent. Go, just as it is, <laughs> that's what you're getting. Well, what I'm being told is, is what here is, is as far as the drawings, is not what we have in the packet. What do you mean? Is this ready to be presented? I asked the question to start with, and we still have the patio in the front. Okay, let me go through the rest of them. We'll come back to that. I need to hear from engineering about how this is, if we're comfortable with the way the, the drainage is being handled on this piece of property. I understand there's still some concerns. Yeah, we did have some talks about the mitigation on site. Um, they sent me the necessary calculations to show me that the site is being mitigated through curb cuts in the parking lot. Okay, and this is draining directly into that drainage just there with an open pipe? Yes. Okay, and that's acceptable? Yes. Okay. Um, you, Patsy, we're utilizing a curb cut that's been reduced in size to allow <laughs> Uh, to allow the, the mitigation to happen within the parking area or the drive area. Um, that's how we're, we're handling the mitigation. It's not a pipe direct, draining direct, directly into that channel. Okay. Can I see that? That's a little flume, a little concrete flume there. This little thing right here? Yes. That's not a pipe or a direct, the water's coming out that It's part a concrete that channel, right? yes. Into the coming creek. out of that open channel right there into this open channel right here. Yes. Okay, then we're back to the design issues. I mean, there, uh, there just seems to be a lot that's unresolved on here. Kind yeah, of I guess I guess I'm unclear. Providing? I mean, I I thought we prepared a a good looking building that was that met standard and I guess my understanding was incorrect. I mean our intent is to to you know be have a nice nice building at this location. I mean um, if we need to add a couple of awnings over the doors we can do that. Um, you know, I I, under, I understand the, the the rendering is not accurate per plan. But the building itself. Well, the is a variance full, full request says applicant requests a variance of the commercial design standards to allow construction as shown in submitted plans and images. Right. That's what you're asking them but to approve. But you have to understand, we submitted this variance prior to receiving comments, just because of the way the schedule um, was required of us, and so that that. But you're asking us to vote on something that we can't see. Yeah, I, yeah, I was. That, that's that's the problem that I have, and and already it's a challenging lot. So I think right. it's really I think it's really important, even more so, that you carry the intent of the design standards and not. And so you're if, you're leaving out some landscaping, or or not putting it where it's going to be. Thoughts that are most effective for beautification. Yeah, and I, I would frankly agree with that. I mean, if you're you're asking for variances for design standards, we can't see exactly what specifically. I mean, there's a lot of questions about trying to get the final picture on what we would be approving to be to be. No, I, I understand. I'm I'm asking for this building without the patio in the front. 
But I'm hearing, am I not, well, maybe am I not, I'm going to add awnings, or maybe I'm going to... Well, I'm asking you know. for this building. I, I guess that's my, my concern. I mean... Okay, so we're I'm, back I'm just to... Trying to... I'm just trying to understand how... My biggest issue is the, is your landscape variances that you have there. I don't know that I have as much of a concern of the large scale of the building itself, but I do have concerns about the variances of the landscaping. We just rezone the property right in that whole piece but there still is a significant amount of property that could be built as far as for something else okay how you're presenting as far as putting this landscaping in here when an additional building is built to the other property you're almost guaranteed that you're going to tear out some of this landscaping and have a, a situation that's going to be out of compliance in, in, in that whole piece and i feel like that we're doing a lot of designing up here i understand um I think also on here a lighting plan was not presented in, as well, or we don't have. It was a full presented. Understanding. It was. It there need to be a modified. Need to be modified. Yeah. It needs to be altered to meet the parking lot pedestrian canopy. Area. Yeah, and you were also bringing up as far as the schedule. The schedules don't change as far as the, the no, process no, and that whole piece. Yeah. So, it, it just feels like that this is being pushed through pretty quickly in, in this whole piece. I, again, I think the I think the building itself looks good. Um, I'm with Patsy. I think some of these, as far as the brakes and really kind of thinking through that, the drive-through piece on the back, I suspect there's going to be a, probably a lot of the uh, electrical hookups and things like that that's going to go on the very back Wait, there. And where are they going to be? In the rear of the building. And then where's the and trash are they screen How are you screening those? They're screening details shown on the plan. Privacy. So on the back of the building? HVAC there, and all there's that. going to be yeah HVAC and then the dumpsters are on the end of that parking drive aisle on the on the uh, west side of the building. Erin, can you go back to the site plan? I I still don't see where they're going. To be. At the very end of the the drive, where the dumpster is going to be. Is that what you're asking? Oh, the dumpster's going to be down there at the end where the turnaround is. Yes. Okay. Where is the HVAC and all of that equipment that goes with the building itself? Where is it going to be? On the top? And does the parapet wall cover all that? Do we know that? I'm not sure. Any other comments? I got to see, did I miss anything? We went, we haven't seen the plans, but they'll probably have to screen it. I can't, Ed, you're going to have to come to the, Mike, I can't hear you. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen the plans, the, the building plans themselves, but they'll probably have to screen anything that goes on that roof. They got a, um, it's just ice cream, doesn't have any hamburgers, nothing like that. Jason. Because they have a hood and duct system with an exhaust fan. That sticks up even yes, higher. Yes, it does. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna have to screen all that or raise their parapet. One or the yeah, other. So we we'll not, deal we, that with the building department. Gets it, yeah, but yeah, but that, yeah, that yeah. affects what the building looks like, and when we get into that, this is not just an ice cream place, right? We all think it's just ice cream because it says the creamery. We're all expecting every flavor. Uh, dairy related. Okay, okay. We were thinking it was all ice cream, so that's a different kind of thing, so. Is that it? Okay, any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Let me just point out that if the variances aren't granted, they'll have to go back and either redesign and meet the design standards or come back with something different. Do you want to take them separately or take them together? That's up to you guys. Well, Sarah, did, you probably have some comments on this. I think they need to be separate. Oh, yeah. I, I would prefer from a legal standpoint that they be taken separately. Thank you. Fair enough. The variance for uh, deviation of commercial design standard. I have a call for the vote for that. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Covert. Haney? No. Parsley? No. Peters? No. Tyler? No. Compton? No. Covert? Yes. 
David? No. Uh, the variance for deviation commercial design standard does not pass 6-1. And variance for deviation of landscaping requirements. Mr. Chair? Yes. Can I table project? Yes. Until next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, uh, L19-04, Wabi Lane Apartments, 580 East Randall Wabi Lane. This also has two variances, 19-18, variance for deviation of parking requirements, and B19-19, variance for deletion of drive through presented by Blue and Associates. George DeCame with Blue and Associates. Uh, the drive through is, is just the result of being a second phase of an existing subdivision. We really couldn't make that work. The parking variance that we're asking for is just based on use of the existing parking lot. Only about 50% of the existing parking lot gets used uh, just based on visual observation by the city and by us and by the owner of the, of the property as well. So we're asking for those variances just to, we don't want to create more parking than what's absolutely necessary. So that's what we're doing. Uh, otherwise, it's a apartment project, cluster housing, green spaces. We're offering a volleyball court, basketball. Um, you know, some we actually have some uh, benches and some areas, and then we're doing in the uh, detention pond. We are doing a golf or soccer. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm here for you. Oh, and all property owners are present. Okay. Staff comments. First, let me say we've worked long hours, many meetings, yes. and this developer and their engineer has worked. Closely with staff trying to make a major difference to this whole project, and we appreciate that. And, and I thank we've you. We've been <laughs> back and forth a lot and had a lot of discussions and a lot of concerns about it. Um, there are still some comments from utility companies and city departments that must be addressed. They are actually providing a second access to this to meet the fire code through the subdivision to the west of it. They're purchasing a house, removing it, creating it as emergency access. It will be screened and it will not be used for anything except emergency access. Uh, they worked with the location of the buildings and how they're positioned on the piece of property to meet the multifamily design standards. They provided amenities to this entire project that we feel like is enough that will help address the lack of amenities in the first phase because they're adding, you know, work in the detention pond and equipment and all that kind of stuff. Um, they need to provide the completion of the pedestrian walkway connectivity to the existing lot, tot lot and the proposed volleyball court. I think we we're missing those. I think that's just something you need to address as far as that's concerned. Uh, I need to hear from engineering to see if there's any, any concerns left from engineering on drainage on this piece of property. Uh, no, they sent me another drainage report to uh, show what they were doing here. And we're all good with it. Okay. In the, the variance to have that single access into it, it is just because that was a piece of property that that's the way it was laid out. The way it was originally laid out uh, back whenever the first phase was, was developed was before the multifamily design standards. But I think we're going to have a really improvement into this project as a whole. Their reduction of parking spaces is about 8.4 percent. Yeah, we didn't. We tried to keep it under 10. Yeah. And there's no point creating a lot of extra parking out there if it's not needed to. I don't know how many of you been out there and looked at it. Uh, they have worked on the existing structures that are out there. They make you improvements on it, and you can see an improvement on the entire project as we. Is that it? Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Motion to approve subject to uh, staff comments. We got the two variances. Two variances first. Oh, I'm sorry. Call for the vote for, Call for the vote for the parking requirement. Yes, sir. Call for vote by Mr. Covert. That's the parking requirements in the delete the through drive. Both of them, right? Taking them both. Both together. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Amy? Yes. 
The variance is uh, for parking and deletion of drive through pass 70. I think I heard a motion from Mr. Covert for a large scale. Second. Second by Mrs. Haney. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Large scale passes 7 0. Thank you. Uh, next section is Board of Adjustments, B19-17, Jody Ebert for Walmart, 2004 <coughs> South Pleasant Street, variance for deviation of sign ordinance to increase size of wall sign, presented by Jody Ebert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jody Ebert. I'm with Harrison French Associates, and I'm here to answer any questions you guys might have. Staff comments? You want to tell us basically what we're doing? We're adding a pickup sign on the front side or the east side of the building. Yes, ma'am. It's a it's one specific sign, illuminated, uh, internal illuminated, sixty five point four three square feet uh, on the east side. Is that what you said? Uh, extreme east side. Uh, also used as somewhat as a wayward sign we want customers as soon as they pull into that parking lot we want them to see that pickup sign on the left know that those there are designated spots for them on that left side uh, so they're not driving around the parking lot looking for their stalls and this is not, not like the elm spring store where there's a canopy in the middle of the no, store this is just on the side of the building right and it's on that corner down here where you where you got to pick up all the pickups at that one corner thing. yes if you guys have the a2 sheet uh, it's detail three on the a2 it's it's pick up with the spark you can see the you can see the parking spaces all of the pickup comes out of that south east corner of the building right so there is a yes there is a little trick here uh, our catch since this submittal uh, our clients has changed their mind to go back to the original proposal for the location of the online grocery pickup stalls. Uh, we redid the SP1 sheet. Uh, I emailed them, got them both to uh, fire and building, and I have the okay, the green light from both Ed and Dwayne. Okay, and that, that, are you still putting the sign on the building in the same location? Yes, ma'am. Even though your pickup will be at, at a different yes, location? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's okay. strictly just the locate. What happened was they didn't feel it was safe enough for the associate to have an aisle to have to cross uh, from parking. So they wanted it one directly straight out. Um, so there's only one crosswalk they would have to, the associate would have to cross. So now it's, if you, I don't have a pointer. Uh, I actually pointer have. Right here. We got a pointer right there. Uh, okay. It's going to, it's this row right straight out in front. Uh, if you have the picture of the wall, the extreme left side, uh, it, yeah, it's almost, directly straight out in front that aisle yes ma'am if if we went by the uh, this uh, previous location the associate would have to cross one aisle with traffic and then perhaps another one to go to the second set of stalls uh, we just didn't feel like it was the store itself didn't feel like it was safe it was the best option uh, so once the client had better eyes on it, uh, the proposal to go back to the original location uh, was changed. And it ended up just being a revised SP1 sheet uh, that got to building fire. Okay, this is a, this basically, is a, this, this variance request is for the additional signage on the building. Yes, right. ma'am. That's all this is. That's all this is. This is you is, guys work out all that other between building and, right. and fire. We're just trying to get an additional orange if you want fine on the, on the building the square footage for the front of the building will go from 549 38 to 614 81 it's an additional 65.43 square foot 
for just the internal illuminated pickup sign. One sign all the way to the left at 65.43. Painted just orange behind it with the spark and pickup on it. Yes, internally right. illuminated. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? Get a call for the vote. Oh, call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mrs. Haney. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Recused. Is that good or bad? David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Six yes, one recused. Uh, the adjustment passes. Thank you. Let's see. B19-21, Tato Properties. 503 Old Missouri Road, variance for deviation of commercial design standards and deviation of 60% parking between front and right of way presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Um, so I'm just looking at the I thought the variance was just for the request of the parking in, in the front facade and not the commercial design standards. Well, your variance request says uh, applicant requests a variance of the commercial design standards to allow construction as shown in submitted plans and images and a variance of the 60% parking between the front facade and the right of way. That's what the variance application says. Okay, I'm sorry. Is. Should just be the parking variance. I believe just the parking variance you're going to go back and revise the building to meet design standards I don't believe I got any comments that were negative to the should have gotten dated well, as a non-large scale there's what was the what was the commercial design center comment um, I don't believe I continuous internal pedestrian walkways we've got the foundation landscaping requirement entry landscaping uh, criteria to uh, community so, uh, you know features um, outdoor storage trash collection HVAC and all that being screened not located within 20 feet of any public street 100% facade requirement of recesses and or projections predominant exterior building materials as well as accents should be compatible with the surrounding area not include the following smooth face concrete block tilt up panels or prefabricated steel panels roof line shall be varied with a change in height every 100 feet in the building length um, deviate from the three fold com customer interest criteria and the lighting plan was not submitted those this, are this those property are the... backs up to Dean's trail too. so it is visible from the Dean's trail on the back those weren't the latest comments I received from Austin the ones I have are dated March 28th. Can you uh, go to the office? I got a, a submittal from from the owner's representative of different a different look than what we saw in the drawing itself. That's what was submitted. Can you go to the other elevations? So that's the front. Oh. Yeah, I wanted to see the side and the back of that one. So the, the second drawing, the top is the front. We just saw the color rendering of the. That is the back. That's what's adjacent to Dean's Trail. That has doors. Nothing else done to it, but a metal building down through there. Sides has a little bit of wainscoting on each side and a different kind of metal at the top. That's what you want it to look like. 
Sorry, uh, again, I, I was thinking it was just the, the variance of the parking in, in front of the okay, building. Okay, you were so only ready to do just parking. I, I wasn't ready for okay. the, the, the building elevations. Um, okay. Because I, I was, maybe I missed. Uh, so do you want comments. us to just vote on the, the variance for the parking? Yes, please. Okay, so we're yeah. only, all we're considering today is the variance for the, um, 60% of the parking to between the front and the right of way. That's the only one. And you're going to work on the design and come back either meet all the design standards or come back with another variance request. Yes. However, I, I just have a comment about Dean's trail. It's not directly on the east side of this building, is it? I mean, it's on the north side of the creek that runs along the north side of the rodeo well, if, grounds. If you look or at the it, south side can, of the road. I, I'm just... I want to make sure that everybody knows that it's not running directly behind this building. No, it's not running directly behind it, but yeah. as you come down the trail, you're going to be able to see the back side of that building. Right. Because the rest of it is parking lot that belongs to NTI and is used by the uh, rodeo people. I mean, there's not any, anything else to be built behind it. Oh, I'm, I understand. Okay. I, I just felt like you were... And the design standards didn't <laughs> say just the front of the building. Right. Okay. I just want to make sure that everybody knew that it wasn't directly behind the building because that's kind of what it sounded like to me so um, I understand though I understand your comment okay so you, we're just doing the variance for 60 percent parking between the front and the right of way I, I have to ask the question is there a reason why all of it has to be there and part of it couldn't be put behind it I mean it looks like we put the building to the back as far as we could on the property is that for what purpose is that we're trying to give these spaces with drive indoors uh, on the front um, I think if we were 30 foot off the front I don't think we could get this footprint with the required parking um, on this site so the whole the whole use of this building is for trades and services somebody that needs a, a small office space and a place to drive in and store stuff and that kind of stuff not any other kind of use are we proposing at this location? No, it's a commercial use. Yeah. Consistent with Randall Wobby. I was just gonna say, similar to what we see on Randall Wobby on, or on, yeah. That's the same kind of use as what we're anticipating. And remember, we get a wide variety of uses in those kind of scenarios. So. What's the um, requirements, if any, of, or restrictions of what's parked in that parking lot? And There's supposed to be operable vehicles. Uh, you're not supposed to do repair and stuff in the parking lot. Um, I don't think there's anything that says you can't park service vehicles in the parking lot or anything like that. I don't know but you still, doing. well, but you still should have require a certain amount of parking that's still available for customers coming in as well. So if you're going to have, as far as uh, designated parking for a work trailer and a truck should there still be the parking as far as for customers to come in to that location? I don't know that our, well, let me, let me ask Aaron. I mean, we have a requirement for loading spaces, and I don't think there's any loading spaces on this side either, is there? On the north Aaron's side of the building. Gonna, there's, a, gonna come that way. there's an option for a loading space on the north okay, side of the building. Okay, you got one loading yeah. space that's tucked in there too. Yeah, for anything over 5,000 square feet, uh, well, it's, it's four, you have to have a designated certain size loading dock for anything 20,000 square feet or a fraction thereof if it's over 5,000 square feet. So they have to have a designated loading space. We didn't have a proposed use for the building, so we couldn't even do an accurate parking calculation. So, um, I mean, it's it's really kind of, what you said, Randall Wobie. We're like, we don't know what's going in here, so. Well, there's not a specific tenant at this time. Um, office warehouse type use. But the way it's designed, <coughs> it's designed for a certain kind of use. Because every one of those units has a... Yeah, I mean, it's not retail. Yeah, yeah from, a, from a staff perspective, I mean, it's very hard for us to analyze this building because it has the roll-up doors. I mean, what you just imagine what use is going in there. It's in a designated C2 area, so we think of any commercial use in there. So you're talking high-end, low-end, just, I mean, and we're trying to evaluate it from that standpoint. Um, this, you know, it is what it is. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. This is just the variance on the 60%.
Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Covert. <clears throat> Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Okay. Variance for parking reduction passes 7 0. And you're asking for the other one to be tabled to the next meeting? Yes. Next item, Hickory Creek uh, Investments, B19-22, lot six of replat of Andrew Mark subdivision, rollers, custom woodworks, variance for deviation of commercial design standards presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple again with ESI. Um, I believe the variance for the commercial design standards was for the building um, as presented. Um, I believe we are using two different types of architectural metal panel. I don't know if we've got that handy. Um, with a brick wainscot around the front and a portion of the sides. Okay. Any comments? So the wainscoting goes around the front and just through the office portion around to the, the side with that. The back of the building is where the, that door and the, the four windows are? I believe that's the front. Okay, that's the front. Yes. Okay, and then we have one side where the doors are. What is the other side? Do we have so another the other, picture? Yeah, the other side looks the exact same so ex without, doors, the, without the doors. So without it's, the doors. So it's a blank wall. All, yes. I mean, it's a metal wall all the way down through there. That's what you're asking for. Any other comments? No, same situation. Okay. Any questions or comments in the audience? Let's do the commission. Call for the vote. I, one comment, I mean, for that oh, one that's uh, no breaks in that, I mean, is there anything that can be done different as far as? You know, I, I look at other buildings like on 40th Street, uh, we had uh, the uh, electric building and they did a good job as far as putting columns in as far as some breaks on that long wall associated with it. So I would even say even the one that has the doors, if there's any breaks that could be put into that, I think that would be beneficial. You're talking along here? And Anywhere along, here? Yes, and along the other, one, other wall of the other side that doesn't have the doors on it. So you're asking him to make changes of what we're actually seeing, and he's asking us to approve it. Can't see the back. Just asking for one thing. I can do that. Okay. Okay, you can do that. What does that exactly <laughs> mean? What are we? What you put the staff in a bad position when you say we want breaks in here, and he can do that. One, two, are three, break, three breaks on both sides. One at the one at the end of the well, Patsy, office area. I put this back on you guys as well, as far as you know that we're going to ask for these types of things, and these are some of the expectations that we should be setting. I agree, but when they insist on submitting them like this, it comes to you guys whether you're ready to accept them or do we send them back and they come back with redesign again, and the next time that won't happen. I'd feel more comfortable sending it back because we don't know the size. I mean, we're designing at the table again. Is what I mean, believe me, if, if I didn't have to stand up here and <laughs> ask for variances, I would um, be much better off. But, you need to, uh, with your well, design I mean, professionals. I need to bring them with to, me. Yeah. You need to guys sit but, but down and work th through this stuff yeah. together. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. It may be that you've presented that to your client and they want it come, to come to the table like this. So that's, that's the option. But I think it's a very difficult to add that now at this point without seeing it. Understood. So are we tabling this or are we moving forward with it? Yep. So vote as shown. Okay. So your call is for their request. Actually, hang on, Patsy, is that, that's ridiculous. Uh, table, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Last item we have is, it's an other item, Dale uh, Ranger request for non-conforming use in an A1 presented by Tim Adams of Dale Range, Ranger. Hello, I'm Tim Adams, requesting for a non-conforming uh, use in an A1. Okay, let me give you a little background on this one. This is the one that came in for a rezoning request at this piece of property located next to uh, 612. 412. Uh, or 612. 612. Yeah, my way. Yeah, 612. I'll keep quiet. It is an existing building that was annexed into the city that has been used as a mechanic transmission shop. Yep, transmission shop. repair. It had a current business license all the way up until we purchased, purchased it. Mm -hmm. Okay. The reason it came for a rezoning is because they want to add an additional an addition. 2,000 mm -hmm. square foot building at this location. When we talked about this as a rezoning application, it kind of creates, well, it doesn't kind of, it will create a spot zone because there's no other commercial around it. So we've been looking at ways that we could help him provide the service he wants at that location without creating a spot zone. So in the ordinance under Article 8, there is a non-conforming use section called change of use. Let me start with this one says, if no structural alterations are made, a non-conforming use of a building may be changed to another non-conforming use of the same or more restrictive classification provided at the Planning Commission, either by general, rural, or by making findings in the specific case, shall find that the proposed use is equally appropriate or more appropriate to the district than the existing non-conforming use. So we would have to determine that changing it from a transmission repair shop to a pest control was making it no worse than what it is now and he could continue his operation without having to rezone it. He has filed his appeal with the city council to, to overturn the zoning or to request to have the zoning overturned and we're looking at an alternative to not actually rezone this but give him the opportunity to have that business at that location. There is another portion of the non-conforming uh, section of it that allows for a the Planning Commission shall determine the amount of expansion to be allowed on a case-by-case -case basis based upon the impact determined to exist on the adjacent property owners, but in no case in excess of 30% of the ex existing improvements and or use of the applicant's land area. The proposed addition that he is making is right at 20%, which would allow them to operate their business, increase it by 30%, which means it could never be increased again, but he would be allowed to move his pest control business to this location and we wouldn't be rezoning the piece of property. That's basically what we're, yep. what we talked about. Yes. So there, <clears throat> there's a clear understanding that if we did this on that, let's just say that you wanted to build um, for your trucks to be stored or something like that beyond it, okay. that would not be allowed beyond this, this, this percentage here. We've we dealt that? with another yeah. property, and we are not going to get into that situation again on there. So I just want to make sure you understand what you're getting into with, with this nonconforming use. So we can't store any trucks there at all? No, you can't build another building. Can't build and another add building. another building to it beyond this 2,000 square foot building. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. That's he fine. parking his vehicles there. Well, vehicles were being parked there all the time. Some of them to be repaired, some of them for people who work there. He's not changing that. And most of the vehicles that are parked there are in the building that's already there. Yeah. You will park your buildings inside the existing building that's mm -hmm. there. Yes. If I understood that correctly, they couldn't expand the parking area either. That would be using expanding the use. So they can add the building, but they can't expand the parking. Because he's parking his, all of his trucks inside. Sure, today, but well, as he expands, you would expect right. him to, right? You expect it to grow, you hope it to grow. Right. Most of our trucks go home with our technicians. <laughs> Oh, gotcha. Uh, the only trucks we keep there are, are termite trucks, which have our hourly labor workers. Uh, they don't take their vehicles home. And they don't store chemicals there in large bulks. We don't have any right. of those issues. It's all stored in individual containers. No, like, five-gallon drums of anything like that. So that's another possible solution. If you can allow that change to that change of use to allow us and there again, it's given to him at that location. He can't take it where, with him anyplace else. If he sells the property and he wants to bring a different use to it, 
then we're back at the same situation again. Go ahead, Joanne. So, <coughs> so, so the, um, w the business license, when did the old business? It didn't expire. It was a current license up to the time that he applied for the business license that he, when it, that's how we got into this yes. discussion is because he applied for a new business license and the other one was still current. There wasn't a lap, because I thought there was a, a six months lapse in business operations and there wasn't. No, not at that time. Dwayne? If he adds to the building, he's gonna open himself up for fire access roads and fire hydrants. Which is a separate code. He'll have to yes. deal with you on how you deal with the fire access and, and those issues. We're, right now we're talking about the zoning issue of whether or not it can be a change in use and the tw up to 30 percent he'll still have to work with the fire marshal as far as that's concerned the access is not paved correct excuse me the access off of whatever that sharp springs road is not paved from the end of that no, road of, it's all sharp gravel. springs is sharp springs road paved yes no lines though okay well that's okay yeah so you might have to pay from the end where the access is up to the building if you add that 2,000 square foot to meet the fire code. If we add. If that, you add, okay. yes. If you add it. You know, and, and, and that's the thing is that you go in knowing that any investment you put in it will be very hard to get out of it because you cannot sell it We're, as commercial. We hope to be there for 50 years. Move, if you decide <laughs> to move on. Yeah, and, if we build know, this 2,000 square feet, it should give us enough space to run the business out of there for several decades. Okay, anything else? Any questions or comments from the audience? Okay. Um, I was the only, I think I was the only yes vote yeah. on this last time on it. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that I really agree with the master land use and the spot zoning piece on it. Um, I'd prefer to make things like that work. Um, I'm not a big fan of these non-conforming use. Um, I do think you have a very viable business and it's definitely something that we want to continue as far as in Springdale and that whole piece on it. So, I mean, we want to help you in, in that, in that uh, regards, but I just want you to be very understanding as far as what you're getting into as far as this non-conforming. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, it's, it's not lost on us that you've invested in the property, right, that you've paid for it um, and then can't use it for what you intended to use it for. So. I appreciate the city working hard with the client to be able to try and put that together. I, I would recommend any future purchases of property that you check the due diligence twice before going through this yes. again. Um, it's really confusing in that it has a Lowell address. Yes, it We're yep. told by your real estate agent it was actually was in Lowell and. Right, it had a Lowell address. If you look it up on Google Maps, it's still low. I know that's behind in times. We didn't find that it was Springdale until closing, in which nothing was mentioned in closing of uh, zoning. I don't know. It, it still has a five-digit number. I don't know. We need to go back and look at how that fits into our numbering system. Sometimes that's the, the giveaway that it has so many digits. And well, you know, when things are on rural routes, it's it's like there's Fayetteville addresses that have Springdale zip codes over on the east side. Very. Um, All right. This will be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Okay. The call for the vote is to allow this new use as a non-conforming use with the ability to expand a not more than up to 30 percent either a new building parking or whatever up to 30 well, percent is all he can expand i mean the building that he was proposing was two thousand was 20 percent no it was two thousand square feet 2, which was, square feet, yeah. which was 30 the uh, 30 percent well, was the 30 percent and no additional parking as he intends to park his stuff inside, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm still a little hesitant it, just because I feel like it creates that island where we have an area that that's not the direction. But if it if it does go let's through, let's be clear: there's really has not been any plans as far right, as this I, area I of the city. I understand that. Well, and next year we update our our land use plan. Maybe we look at this area with now that 612 is through, we know where the access points 
or the crossover is going to be. Maybe we can adjust it then, and then he would have the opportunity, and it wouldn't be a spot zone that was contrary to the land use plan in the next five or ten years, too. There's always that possibility. Days A1, we don't, it's not going to be, it's not going to be commercial. No. And that, that's what got me was it was going to be a commercial property no matter what and anything you want to commercial after if he if he did sell if it stays a one that they have to and they change if they out. if they come with a different use and he sells it then we got to go through the then same, we go thing, same again, thing or it has yeah. to be rezoned again yes because this non-conforming is by individual i mean we just by individuals we don't do it by uh, not a citywide thing it's just a piece are, are of we documenting well exactly what piece is being used of that property so the the control factor in this how this even comes up is through the business license process right. that's usually one of the city's mechanisms for making sure people are complying with the rules and it, it's such a simple item but it does pull something into fact so if he stops running the Adam Pest business uh, for six months, it's done. It will revert back to a A1 as long as we can track that on a business license. And we try to work with most everyone that comes in the door. I've not remember anything we haven't on the dates and everything. Debbie gets about every request that comes through. So, I, you know, we want them to be successful. It was a way to agree with the comprehensive land use while engaging a method of the organ the uh, ordinance that has relief built into it so um, it was a way we could work with the actual business owner on a mistake that was made out in the public and uh, still comply with the ordinance so um, but it still has that control factor to limit the nonconformity allow them to operate but we'll regulate it normally through a business license process every time a new business license comes in there it'll be evaluated to see when the change of use was whether or not it's been vacant for six months whether or not it meets zoning code violations things of that nature um, fire department building code every time the building license change we'll have to go out there and inspect it and we will have to do a zoning evaluation so there's a lot of a lot of regulation control in that factor so that's um, how we've got this started yeah. in the first place because he came to get his business Right. So my, so my biggest concern is that you document what piece of what part of that land is being used and what building space because that that was an issue we had in previous. Yeah, we had a problem with that gray, with that gray, before no gray, gray areas. Yeah, we'll we'll track it in our GIS database. It'll also go in the development folder for what is approved in this meeting. The meeting minutes usually go with that as well, and so it'll be a clear to find what the expansion is, what the allowed use is, so that we can track it from here on out. So. So we have a call for the vote by Mr. Covert. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Nonconforming use passes 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Get you your business license now and. You want to continue with your appeal you have to you're, you're probably on the agenda for next week if you want to to withdraw your appeal you need to let the mayor's office know okay uh, we do have a current business license in Springdale do we just need to move it to this location yeah, you, you have to go through that process to, to get it moved to them we'll note that it is a recognized nonconforming and any improvements that we do I need to check with fire first you have to submit a, a plan on how you're going to if you're going to add a building or parking or stuff you have to submit a plan to our office and we'll go through the process okay thank you you're welcome thank you planning director report uh, the uh, appeal of the sign for the pest control place on 71 was uh, the council returned the planning commission's decision and the permit was granted for that uh, work session April the 16th at 530 um, I think we need to continue and try to finish up the uh, review of the master street plan I have the I have a document drafted 65% with all of the new stuff that we got from tool to be included so we can start looking at that kind of stuff with any luck I'll send this out to you before we meet on the 16th at 30 so we can start that and then we need to come up with a public participation process and get that, so that we can get that and if you guys have other 
topics you want to look at, let me know. Not that I don't have anything to do, but you know, I need to kind of get things in the pipeline so I can start doing some review down the line. So. With any newer members, is it necessary? I don't know. I don't remember if we went through with legal. Uh, I think Sarah was talking about after the legislative session, we need to have a session, and that's probably not going to be <coughs> until July or August until, so that we can go through all the changes that's come through this legislative session and how it affects our work. But we're going to wait till the session closes and we know when things are going to go into effect and we'll do all that at the same time. The session should end next week. Uh, Lord will and the creek don't rise, but um, the effective date will be later. So, yeah, it's so. 90 days after it closes when things go into effect if they don't have an emergency clause. So we're probably talking about Nothing. the August work session where we get into those. And there's been several changes in this legislative session that we need to make sure we, I, I would use the term understand loosely, figure out what we're going to do with. I don't think understand is something Um, did we ever make a change in procedure as far as if a, um, what do you call it, got my brain's not working now on it, uh, the requester as far as any type of variance or something like that, did we make a change in procedure that we could still hear it with them not being present? Only if they have <coughs> signed a signed statement authorizing somebody to represent them. What if they don't have anyone to represent them? How can we hear a request if there's not somebody here that wants to represent what the request is? Or somebody, that's where we get into those issues. Well, the concern in where this came up, and I don't think we ever addressed it, is, is that if you say you have a certain builder that uh, has a request um, and, and they don't show, but yet there are adjacent property owners that took their time out to be here, um, we had talked about potentially making a change in procedure that we would still be allowed to hear something and actually uh, vote on it. In, in that whole piece. Well, I don't, seriously, I, I, I think that creates an issue because the person who's requesting it doesn't get an opportunity to address their concerns or to respond to whatever the neighbors are saying. I don't know how we could take action. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we, you can't vote on it if there's not the presenting party here, just straight up on that. Um, if you want people to have the opportunity to be heard without the property owner being here that's something I can look into but we cannot vote on it if we don't have a presenting party here that that creates a big legal issue for us okay I don't have anything else any other questions any comments from anyone all right meeting adjourned thank you